Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be critiquing Norman Wiltberger's Introduction to Euclid's Elements Part 1. Now I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time on it, it's going to be a short video, but I'm just doing this to expose his utter ignorance and stupidity. Now by the way, I have nothing against Wiltberger, he's a very nice man. But unfortunately, like most mainstream academics, and he, th he believes he's not mainstream, but he really is. Um, like most mainstream academics, they're absolutely clueless where Euclid's elements are concerned. So let's begin. Now, just a quick thing here, Euclid, uh, not Euclid, Wilberger starts this um, uh, video by saying that there are unclear definitions in Euclid's elements. So... There are some unclear definitions, but these can be clarified through study and text, okay? So, and then uh, Wiltberger claims that Euclid does not make any assumption about lines intersecting or circles into, uh, I mean, that Euclid makes assumptions about lines intersecting or circles intersecting. That's absolutely false because there are no assumptions. So first, it is imperative to understand that lines are not actual tangible objects and any line represents a distance. Second, the points or locations along a line are like road signs or flags that indicate a given distance. Points are not any more parts of a line than road signs are part of a road. Okay? So third, when lines cross each other, this is equivalent to intersecting each other since there is a point anywhere along the path of both lines. Okay? meaning, or, or anywhere along the lines. I didn't even have to say the path of both lines. Meaning there will, be, there will also be a point where they, they cross each other or intersect. In other words, this is not even an issue because the question to ask is not if the lines intersect, but if each line has a distance marker anywhere along the line. Okay? That's the question to ask. So fourth, we do, we do know that two circles of the same diameter intersect because the circle is a symmetrical object. Wilberger's laughable argument is easily disproved in the classic Greek way. Now, it takes a genius like me to tell you something like this because you are, chances are, you are too stupid to think of it. And uh, in the spirit of my ancestors, here is the simple proof. Let's suppose that two circles do not intersect if their centers are a radius apart, okay? And that's the argument that Bill Berger is putting over here in this diagram. So if you look at this, uh, it's not that diagram there. Um, uh, never mind. If you look at his diagram, you'll see that uh, he's talking about proposition one, where he believes that Euclid just assumed that circles are going to intersect. So suppose that the two circles do not intersect if their centers are radius apart. This means that the path generated by each radius must at some points be less than the length of the radius from the center. Okay? The very thing is impossible. Q-E-D. I'm the great John Gabriel, discoverer of the first rigorous formulation of calculus in human history, the new calculus. Please subscribe to my channel, spread the news, click like, and join me again very soon for another interesting video. Till next time, goodbye.